in this screencast video lecture we are going to see about the another important disease that have been spread there by the mosquitoes this is dengue the pathogen behind this disease is a viruses various strains of dengue viruses from virus strain 1 to 4 have been existing that have been playing role in the primary spread of the dengue here the vector behind the spread of the disease is mainly the mosquitoes belonging to aedes aegypti as well as aedes albopictus the pathogen is a virus that is dengue virus which is a single stranded rna virus that belongs to the family flaviviridae here the mosquito vectors that serve as a vectors pick up the virus when they feed on the blood of an infected human and further when they bite a new human the pathogen that is virus has been spreading from one person to another person in other words aegis mosquitoes are a passive transporters of this parasitic disease dengue from one person to another the incubation period of the dengue disease is from 2 to 8 days that follows three phases that are so unique which includes febrile phase critical phase as well as convalescent phase the dengue fever lasts for 2 to 7 days in severe cases in such cases the blood platelet count seems to be decreasing this may lead to difficulty there in the breathing as well as vomiting are observed as a common symptoms next we look at the disease tenuosis which is caused by the tapeworm the tapeworms and roundworms are all coming under the group helminthes which refers to worms that are having a deleterious effect there on the humans the tapeworms that have been involved in this disease causation belong to tenia saginata and tenia solium which is also referred as a tenia asiatica these tapeworms are basically parasitic flat worms that belonging to the class cystoda they live in the digestive tracts of the vertebrates as adults and often in the bodies of various animals as juveniles it refers to the larval forms okay where from this particular disease is caused it's mainly by taking the porks pork is the one which can be easily infected with this particular tapeworms and eating such a pork can be able to cause the tenuosis disease next we look at into the overview of their life cycle their importance and how best we can able to adopt certain control measures first we look at the medical as well as veterinary importance of this tapeworm the human health has been drastically affected there by the tapeworm infection so this tenuosis can be caused there with the help of two different tapeworms that is tenia saginata which commonly infests the beef whereas the tenia solium is the one which will be infecting the pork the disease progression could be affected there by the larval forms which can able to cause a symptom called as a neurocysticercosis that is larval forms can able to enter inside the nervous system and they can able to damage the nerve that results in severe neurological problem including seizures next we look at the animal health in livestock tapeworm infections can able to cause significant economic damage due to the reduced meat quality weight loss of the animals and other various health issues say if you look at the zoonotic potential some tapeworm such as echinococcus granulosus can able to infect both humans and animals also this can able to cause certain serious diseases such as hydatid disease next we look at the life cycle of the tapeworm it involves multiple stages that typically includes at least one intermediate host that is a main host will be there and an intermediate host also associated there with the life cycle of the pathogen first stage is a egg stage here the tapeworm eggs that are technically referred as a gravid proglottids that is the matured egg sac of the tapeworm is referred as gravid proglottids they are excreted in the feces of a infective definitive host mainly in the humans or in some case the animals also these eggs are the released into the environment while grassing of the intermediate host which includes a cattle pigs or fishes they can able to take up the eggs that have been present there in the environment that is this egg cases or eggs will be ingested and they will be reaching there 
intestinal layers where the eggs will be hatching into the immature forms mainly the larva which are technically referred as a onchospheres this larva will be commonly penetrating the intestinal wall and they can able to travel to various tissues or organs of the animals the next stage is a cystic stage here the larva develop into cyst forms they can be of a cysticercy is a common form apart from that hydatid cyst can be formed in some species of tapeworm such as echinococcus finally the cystic forms can able to invade there into the muscle tissues of the intermediary host that includes a cattle or a pig the next stage is adult stage which commonly happens there in a definitive host that is mainly in the human who hinges the raw or undercooked meat of a pig or a cattle can able to spread the disease there in the adult thus an undercooked meat containing this cysti cerci that is certain larval forms they can able to easily move on to the definitive host intestine and they can able to attach to the intestine with the help of their special hooks and they can able to develop into an adult tapeworm thus the cycle repeats there in the nature so if you look at into this diagram you can able to see the different stages of how the tapeworm has been reaching there into the environment that is in the form of the egg case that is gravid proglottids or egg case of the tapeworm this egg have been coming out there with the feces of the definitive host such as a human so this feces containing eggs can able to contaminate the environment and they can able to even present there in the vegetations so when this vegetation has been fed with the other intermediary host of animals for example pig or cattle this eggs will be consumed there with that vegetation and it reaches there into the intestinal wall in the intestinal wall this eggs will be hatching and they form into the larval structures which can able to penetrate there into the intestinal wall and they can able to reach even the muscles of this intermediary animals where they form into onchospheres to cysticercy that can able to infect there into the muscles of this intermediary animals next we look at the control measures which can be taken from the different perspectives say for example preventive measures medical treatment even certain veterinary control measures can be effective the preventive measures maintaining and hygiene and sanitation are very important that is proper disposal of human as well as animal feces can able to reduce the environmental contamination of this tapeworm egg cases especially the gravid proglottis that is the matured egg cases of the tapeworm then meat inspection and processing a rigorous inspection of meat and a proper cooking or freezing of the meat during the storage are very important and these have a lot of chance to kill the tapeworm larva at the meat level itself and the next one is a maintaining a good public health education for the people of the society educating the human communities about the risk of consuming raw or undercooked meat and the importance of maintaining personal hygiene or all will reduce the incidence of this tapeworm infections to a larger extent next one is the medical treatment that can able to control this particular tapeworm infections first one is using of anti parasitic drugs there is a lot of medication such as praziquantel as well as albendazole this albendazole are commonly given as a tablets there even in the schools mainly to control this kind of a worm infections there in the children they are effective against the adult tapeworm as well as the cystic stages of the tapeworm the treatment regime or the period depend upon the type of tapeworm species that have been involved there and the stages of the infection that could be come across there in the host the next step is regular deworming the areas that are endemic for a tapeworm infections usage of deworming technique will greatly reduce the infections especially deworming of humans and animals can able to lower the spread and control the 
movement of this pathogen there in the environment. The next mechanism is a veterinary based control of this particular pathogen. Here there are two steps. The first one is a livestock management. Implementing good livestock management practices such as again a regular deworming there for the livestock and using a proper feed storage that is avoiding feeds that may be contaminated there with the feces or the contaminated water sources can able to drastically reduce the infection of the tapeworms to the animals. And a regular vaccination could definitely help to lower the tapeworm infections there in the livestock. 